Hello, I'm Michael P. Coleman, content director and chief writer for Brother Be Well. Today, we're going to be talking about the intersection of technology and mental health. And we've got a couple of experts to join us that I'd like to introduce to you. First up, we've got Aaron King. He's a registered nurse and secretary of the Capital City Black Nurses Association. Aaron, how's it going this afternoon? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Really doing well. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. And we've also got a good new buddy of mine, Dr. Galen Duncan. He's a licensed clinical psychologist and vice president of King's Academy and professional development for the Sacramento Kings. Dr. Duncan, how's it going today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Really good to have you as a part of the team. Looking forward to this and many other conversations down the road. Absolutely. Let's start it out right away. Let's talk about technology. It's, it's omnipresent these days. Most people would argue that it's a necessity. I'm wondering why we need to manage it from your perspectives. Why do we need to manage technology? Well, I'll take this one. I mean, I think that uh, anything good can go bad eventually. Um, you know, as we continue to evolve as humans, as we continue to create wonderful things to make our lives easier and make our, our lives better, we have to be very careful about the fine tuning that we mess with inside of the human mind and the human brain as we go that way. Mm -hmm. Aaron, what about you? You got a take on that? Why do we need to manage technology? I, I think that especially now with the younger youth population, we're starting to see a lot of habits form around technology. Um, it's really um, becoming a little bit more in, impersonal, you know, the connections that we make. And so even things like limiting tablet use for children and Going up into adolescence, we, we really don't know what the long term impacts of what technology will do. Hmm. You just touched on the, the next question, actually, I have for you guys. What are some of the problems, some of the pitfalls that can come up from the usage or the over usage of technology? Aaron? Um, I think if we're if we start looking at different little different aspects of it. Um, like for my son, I know that we worry about like his vision. We learn, we worry about like uh, dexterity issues. Um, we do have um, some of the social issues that we worry about, like communications, those kind of things. I know that even fine motor skills, that's one thing that I've noticed um, for just holding a pen or a crayon or a pencil. Um, these are all things that you pick up through play. Um, and then we're relying more on technology for entertainment, and we're starting to see that more in our children with late delayed with late with delayed uh, latency. Yeah. And you mentioned, I'm just curious. You mentioned holding a pencil in some of those activities. Does a stylus or an Apple pencil and a tablet take the place of that, or is not quite the same mm -hmm. thing in terms of the development of kids? I think we. I think that that is actually a good um, comparison. I think with a stylus, you could. I know there's a lot of applications where they, they uh, focus on coloring and things like that. Um, but there is still kind of like that um, that issue of um, communication um, with others. Um, a lot of the communication, being able to read like nonverbal cues and things like that, you kind of lose that with technology. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Dr. Duncan? Do you have a, any thoughts about that? Problems or pitfalls with the use of technology? Absolutely. I think Aaron's right on with that. Um, you know, I, I've read where, you know, technology has has seen to stunt the imagination of young people. Um, it's shortened their attention spans. Um, it's created some a lot of isolation. Uh, we also know that it affects sleep. Uh, you know, as you get further off into it um, and the usage of a phone or a tablet and looking down with your neck, it affects your neck and your back. Um, you know, and then you have those uh, individuals who develop anger and anxiety based on the postings and things that they're reading. So there's a ton of things that fall into that aspect of, of, of having technology in place and maybe misusing or overusing it. Yeah, yeah. You, you just touched on we're going to be talking as a whole separate conversation. You talked about posting. We're going to be talking about those social media sites and what posting and over posting and then being over reliant on the responses coming back can do to our own mental health. We'll be talking about that down the road. Let me ask you guys another one. You, you talked about altering sleep patterns, Dr. Duncan. Um, are there times of the day or night that are better than other times? Or is it is there no one size fits all, so to speak? Is there a better time than not to use technology heavily? Well, one thing that we say to our players is that we do not want them using technology at night when they get ready to go to bed. 
When it's time to go to sleep, we would prefer that those phones are either shut off or in another room. Um, I've personally started using this myself to try to get some better sleep. Um, but it is it's definitely, I feel that at nighttime, we need to get those things out of the room because even when you're asleep, you get a message and you get a notification, the light comes mm -hmm. on and we may not necessarily wake up fully, but it affects our REM and our, our you know, restful sleep. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, what's your, I, I could imagine you're treating a lot of people with conditions that are um, prompted or driven by that technology used late at night. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, and you're starting to see a lot more people take medication for sleeping. Um, and I think that the even just the light, the stimulation, the constant stimulation, um, it kind of blocks people from being able to go into REM sleep. Um, I know there's been a lot of studies about even removing television out of the room. And if you could think about your mobile device, you're constantly getting alarms and beeps and rings and vibrates. And it's just that constant stimulation that keeps you away from rest. I hadn't really thought about it until you said that. I, I got I took my TV out of my bedroom decades ago for that reason. I've begun to read some of that research, but I still go to sleep with that cell phone right on that nightstand. So based on some of what you guys are saying, I think I'm going to try I'm going to get rid of that tonight and see how it goes. 